A Clockwork Orange is about Alex, the protagonist and our humble narrator, and his love for violence and classical music. Dressed in the height of fashion, he and his friends walk the streets at night to quench their thirst for violence. Crime to Alex is another art form. He takes aesthetic pleasure in it. The satisfaction and thrill that he derives from listening to Mozart or Beethoven is sim similar to the delight he experiences when indulging in acts of violence. He ends up in prison and a few years later finds himself on the brink of freedom by being thrown into reclamation treatment. This is where the author's central argument takes shape regarding free will. Alex has promised freedom, but prior to that he undergoes a fortnight of torturous treatments which turn him into a clockwork orange, a machine capable of only good and no evil. Anthony Burgess points out how this conditioned goodness is useless since it wasn't chosen by the thrust upon Alex. The book ends on a positive note, but not before you realize the complete lack of remorse on Alex's part. His excuse for giving up the life of ultraviolence is his growing up and not regret. This turns him from a child into a man. The book raises some fascinating moral and ethical questions. We follow the adolescent anti-hero Alex on his roller coaster ride of life, from elation to despair and from adolescence to maturity. The book is divided into three main parts, each with seven chapters totaling 21, a symbol of maturity for Alex. The first and third part mirror each other rather nicely, and mostly throughout the plot was engrossing and fast-paced. The NADSAT vocabulary can be a little confusing at first, but it adds to the experience and immerses us in Alex's world. Many NADSAT words are based loosely on Russian and most sound quite harsh with a lot of Z, T, CH, and K sounds in the words. This is perfect for our raw and jagged humble narrator Alex, fitting in seamlessly as a key part of the novel. Many horrific crimes take place in the novel, blurred and tinted by this NADSAT language, often with classical music in the background. It almost distracts us from the wickedness and crimes taking place, describing them as something glorious and elating. This book contains a lot of ultra-violent scenes. It features lengthy descriptions of heinous crimes that are very vivid descriptions, full of excitement. Yet it does not glorify violence, per se, nor does the book talk about violence in a way. Rather, it's an exploration of morality of free will, of whether it is better to choose to be bad than to be conditioned to be good, of alienation and how to deal with the excess of which such alienation may lead and ultimately of one man's decision to say goodbye to all of that. In this case, that is Alex, leading to his full maturity at the end of the book. As we walked along the flat block marina, I was calm on the outside, but thinking all the time. So now it was to be Georgie the General, saying what we should do and what not to do, and dim as his mindless, grinning bulldog. But suddenly I vidded that thinking was for the gloopy ones, and that the omni ones used like inspiration and what bog sends. For now it was lovely music that came to my aid. There was a window open with a stereo on, and I vidded right at once what to do.